Those who have been in a coma, what was it like? When I was in fifth grade I fell out of a tree and bonked my head pretty well. I woke up three days later in the hospital. For me, the experience is easily summarized in three parts. When I fell, I blacked out before I hit the ground, or at least that is where memory fades. And, fades, is really the best word. It was as if my consciousness was drained away and then blackness and nothingness. It was as if my body knew how badly it was going to hurt and so it shut down. I have very, 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 vague memories while in the coma of hearing my dad reading a book, or my mom telling me that she knew I would pull through, or of a tube in my nose. But these were always super fuzzy moments and I never was conscious during them, it was more like a half second of being aware of one particular thing the way the tube felt being taped against my arm and wishing I could reach out and move it and then back into the nothingness. I think that I was somewhat aware of the fact that I was a little more aware each time that this happened but honestly I am not certain of even that much. Waking up was sudden. So, so sudden. I was in blackness. Had a moment of awareness, like, my neck hurts, and then the pain was magnitudes higher. No longer a distant perception but something that I was actively conscious of. Waking up was the most painful moment of my life and I just started crying and then couldn't even cry it hurt so bad. I think that had more to do with injuries sustained to my neck and head than the coma, but that is what it was like. After an hour my body was used to the pain and I was totally normal, albeit very weak, hungry, and thirsty. I survived and am fine now without any lasting issues. In 2016 I was in a coma from March 31st to May 5th, then half awake for another month after that. It was like the longest scariest dream of my life. I was medically induced by a fentanyl drip for about a week at first and let me tell you, fentanyl is a demon. Wacky dreams about fighting corrupt hospital officials, so my brain knew where I was. They didn't think I'd ever talk or walk again but in the hospital bed I laughed at an episode of that 70s show and inclined every day after. Putting me at about 85% health overall these days. But pretty much an average guy. Oh it was a head injury, had a seizure in the bathroom that made me fall onto the sink. Similar experience, drip and all, but I had Guillain-Barr syndrome. I dreamed slash hallucinated that my younger sister was dead, cut in half, and they were making me lay on her severed body. When I woke up the first thing I asked was how she died and everyone looked at me like I was crazy. There were actually many times I believed they put a random dead body in my bed. Another one I had was about the nurses encasing me in concrete, I was paralyzed so that's just how my brain processed it. I was aware of people talking to me and being with me, I just couldn't communicate and my brain processed everything in this weird dream world. I had meningitis when I was 12, which got misdiagnosed for stomach flu and ended up with me being taken to the hospital last minute. The last memory I had was falling asleep watching the emergency news on the Brussels airport attack. I later on had a sort of fever dream, which ended up to be true about my parents driving me to the ER saying, it's okay, over and over again. I couldn't move or talk, so it seemed more like a dream than something that was actually happening. I saw the lights of the ER parking lot which made me close my eyes and after that it was like taking a nap. I had no awareness of time at all, it's like going to sleep and just waking up what feels like a second later but it's actually morning already. I woke up six days later, highly drugged but only gained consciousness the day after. My first memory after waking up is opening my laptop in the hospital bed to play Minecraft, I have no idea what happened or what I said when I woke up before that. I can only compare it to when you're little and wake up at a friend's house and don't know where you are. I was in a coma for two months after a bad car accident. It wasn't medically induced, it was thanks to brain damage. When I woke up I was alone in the hospital room and had no clue what happened or why I was there. I had a neck brace on due to a broken neck so I figured something was wrong with my neck but was unsure how or what happened. 
For some reason I thought I was sixty years old, I was in my twenties. I was paranoid and scared, but didn't know why I was there. I used context clues to figure out I was in the hospital. It was frightening. After about five minutes I decided to go back to sleep. Two months of sleep wasn't quite long enough. Two weeks induced because of swine flu. During this time Oprah announced she was ending the Oprah Winfrey show. I was very upset to learn this after the fact. Mostly because the TV running in my room plus the drugs they gave me to keep me under gave the most cinematic dreams I've ever experienced, somehow the news of Oprah retiring filtered into my brain as dreaming about saving the whales with her in a submerged Chicago. We had champagne brunch. It was excellent. I was also a superhero who could fly and fought my enemies on the rims of volcanoes. And then I woke up and not only could I not fly, but my buddy Oprah had betrayed me into retirement. I was crushed. I wasn't in one for long, just under a week. While I was in the coma, I didn't remember a thing. When I came out of it, I just remember hearing my mom yell to the attending, he's up. Then I woke up with a bunch of white coats in the room. I was super stiff and incredibly confused. Oddly enough, I kept having vivid dreams of myself in the coma after the fact. Still have them to this day. They're almost like an out-of-body experience because I can see myself laying in the bed with people around me. I have those dreams about when I had the swine flu as a kid. I can see myself in my parents' bedroom and everything is a bit purple. This is so interesting to read everyone's experience. I'm an ICU nurse and I work with patients in comas all the time. I talk to them, I let them know why I'm touching them whether it be to give them medication, draw lab work, bathe them, clean them after an incontinent episode. I'll also reorient them to where, why, and how they're in that situation. I'll also tell them when their loved ones call to check on them. I would feel awful knowing someone I took care of had flashbacks of feeling violated during a coma. I do the same, although I'm a hospice nurse so when they get to that stage they're not likely to wake up again. But I talk to them all, tell them exactly what we're going to do and why, I treat all patients with equal dignity whether conscious, unconscious or after they've died, I still talk to them after they've died in the same way I speak to them when they were alive. I was in medically induced coma for about a week. The coma itself is not much to talk about, there is just a gap in your memory, even from before it happened, I don't even remember the accident that brought me there in the first place. Waking up from it is much different story though. Since I was fully dosed by painkillers and sedatives and whatnot I was basically high as kite and since the trauma I suffered was very serious my brain constructed very stressful, vivid nightmares I remember to this day. OP, I was in a coma for almost a month, 29 days. The dreams were terrible, and I had a problem where if I smelled something that I could relate to pure oxygen, or the room I was staying in, it would trigger a flashback. I would literally be reliving it all over again. Bleach was almost guaranteed to trigger it. It gets better. And if you have flashbacks, tell your doctor. They put me on something that stopped them. A year later I stopped taking the meds to see if I was better, and yes, my brain rewired. Bottom line is, I know what you are going through. You are torn with the knowledge it wasn't real but it is remembered as clearly as any other real-life memory. I was in a coma for three days following a serious cycling accident, medically induced. I woke up with zero recollection of why I was there or what was said while I was out. It is easily the scariest situation I've found myself in, but I can't say I remember it. I woke up to my mom and dad in the hospital with me and my body in traction of some sort and that was way scarier to me. Was hit by a car when I was five years old. Ended up with toxic shock syndrome and went into a coma for four months. I just remember some very weird dreams, which I can still recall vividly 26 years later. Someone mentioned something about visiting another realm, 
and that's pretty close to the mark. What happened in these dreams? My favorite dream from the coma involved me floating over a huge gray-colored ocean, and I saw something rise up from the water that I can only describe as a dragon with scoliosis. It moved its head like it was smelling the air and then turned and looked right at me. In another one my favorite cousin had abandoned me and now lived in the ceiling above my hospital bed with my two best friends, Jason and Jason, who were also twins. They just moved a tile out of the way and would just stare at me from above. Not me, but my dad has described his coma after his car accident. He was pulled up a little too far at a stop sign, and a guy who was speeding and on his phone swerved off the road. So he was in a coma for about two months. On my end, it wasn't like the movies. He didn't just wake up miraculously. It was two months of steady improvements. One eye opened, then a few days later his other eye was half open, then he could wiggle a toe, then he could move his fingers, etc. On his end, he said he could hear bits and pieces of what was happening around him, but it was like a dream that he couldn't wake up from. When me and my two younger siblings would come in and talk to him, his heart rate would go down. When a football game was on and his friends came to sit with him and watch it, the nurses made them turn it off once his team started losing because his heart rate blew up. I was in one for like two weeks I would not wish it on anyone. For me I was in a long dream. I did realize I was asleep for a long time. I was still able to feel and hear, which was interpreted into my dream. Example, my hands were restrained so I would not pull out any tubes and my dream was that I was being held in a prison. I was in a medically induced coma for three days during my cancer treatment. My identical twin brother died around a year prior, also to cancer, and the entire time I was in the coma, I was with him. We were in a large green field with lots of sun and my conversations with him felt real. Other than that, I didn't hear any of my family talking to me while I was asleep. It was just like I had gone to bed for three days, and I woke up feeling very tired. I do wonder whether my interactions with my twin brother were real, or if it was just the drugs I was given causing them. Ten days I don't remember anything about. Not sure if it is a blessing or a curse. Hit by a drunk driver. My wife and I lived, our daughter didn't. To me that stuff on TV where the point wakes up and everything goes back to normal is bullshit. When I woke up I was in a conversation with another PT Air Force had sick bays, not individual rooms. I can only compare it to a computer, I had been hung in an update and then, flicker, new screen. I had woken up several days earlier, but nothing stayed with me. My wife says I was paranoid that they were putting acid in my IV because I was tripping. I was hostile and aggressive. I read the medical records, they kept me restrained for a couple of days after I hit a nurse. I started acting normal so they moved me from ICU to the sick bay. The blessing is for getting 10 days of some pretty intense pain. I was broken in a lot of places and bruised in all the rest. Never knew you could bruise some of them. That freaked me out. The curse was I wasn't there when my wife needed me most. There is that tinge of guilt that she faced that grief alone for ten days. I know, couldn't be helped. Not my fault, but live through it and tell me how it feels. There was a kid named Martin Pistorius who fell into a coma for twelve years but his mind woke up two years into it, however he was unable to speak or move, and everyone believed he was a vegetable at best. This wasn't the case, his mind was fully there. For over a decade he was mistreated in facilities that played Barney repeats every single day for years without him being able to look away, true mental torture. He was also physically and sexually abused on top of that. At one point he couldn't stop throwing up so the nurse's tube fed him his own vomit. His parents were unaware of all this and tried adapting the best they could. In some of the lowest moments he remembers his mother telling him she wishes he would just die, yet all he could feel was compassion for how she felt. 
Eventually someone who cared enough realized he was responsive enough and got him the help he needed and now he has a wife and kids, talks like Stephen Hawking, and is a computer programmer. Really shows how you can still emerge from the deepest, darkest places of life. If anyone is wondering, it happened to him due to cryptococcal meningitis. Fungus covered his brain and spinal cord, the disease comes from soil with infected bird droppings being inhaled. One day he was just an innocent 12-year-old playing outside, only for his life to be changed because of simply breathing in some kicked-up dirt. Glad he came out on top in the end. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.